Hello there, muckers and spell space captains. It's Connor, and welcome to Dreadnought. Hell, it's about fucking time. Right, so Dreadnought. It's a game very similar to another game I play on this channel, where you are put into a ship, a massive ship, a capital ship, and pitched against five other capital ships on the enemy team with four allies on yours. So it's five v five. Right, so that's about where it ends and similarities with Fractured Space, which is the game I was referring to. Although very, very similar in concept, their execution is completely different in many, many ways. In Fractured Space, if I wanted to turn to the right, or move right, sorry, not turn to the right. If I wanted to move left or right, I wouldn't have to turn the face of the ship to face that direction. I would just press Q or E and I would strafe to the left or right, which is something that you can do in most space games, the the vast majority of space games that I played, I can't even think of one apart from this where you can't do that unless it was on console. I can't. But um, yes, this. It's a nice game. It's different from Fractured Space, which a lot of people won't like who really do like Fractured Space. But I'm enjoying it. I've already been in the Alpha for quite a while. I was invited to the first wave of Alpha testers. And... I'm not really sure what I'm doing here. I'm trying to talk while not actually getting involved in the combat at all. Those fighters just crashing into me. Great. Just broadside that guy. Come on, end him, end him. Nah. Okay, I'm going to pay more attention now to the game. But there are massive differences to this game in Fractured Space, as I was saying. In Fractured Space, you have objectives in the game mode. Game mode, sorry, I keep, I keep forgetting about the frontline game mode. Conquest and, and uh, frontline. Both game modes have objectives. Now, there's too many heavies in this team. I'm going to go for a Corvette. In Fractured Space, you have to attack lanes, mines, FOBs, gamma, mining stations, you know, stuff like that to actually push the game forward and in this there is no such objectives the only objective in the game is to kill kill a certain amount of enemy ships to bring the game to an end and that's my problem in fractured space the way to the other objectives there's killing along the way look at this guy here the sniper what's this Right, and this is a sniper. He doesn't deal well against my little ship, so... Look at him. Look at how fast he died. <laughs> oh, that must have been painful for you. I'm sorry. Was it as good for you as it was for me? I don't think so. <laughs> and that's a tactical cruiser, which is a support. And you know what? Different and better about this game than it's better about Fractured Space. The healers aren't fucking OP. In this game, they're just support. They can't heal through damage. They're not a detriment to the attackers on the enemy team. So, let's keep moving. Now, I know a lot of you out there don't have a problem with the healers in Fractured Space. And as much as I have unwillingly come to accept it, realize that it's my opinion. I just don't like healers. Oh, shit, I'm being fired at. Okay, wants revenge. He's not going to get it, though. Thought that was f me moving fast, mate, did you? That ain't fast at all. Prepare for some fucking close quarters intimate action. Look at him. Please see me. Sorry, please see me. He's coming. He's coming. No, 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 no. Don't come. Don't come. Don't come yet. That doesn't sound right. Oh, somebody's firing. Gotta take my quick. Right, I'm out of here. Whoop. Well, that ain't good. Yep, yeah, I did indeed. Oh, there's that support. You know, I could just turn around here and attack you, dude, if you want. Watch this. Alright, so. Reloading, reloading. I even got a chance, mate. 
You're probably thinking, this ship I'm in looks overpowered. It is. The Corvette has been overpowered since the Alpha. But see if I ever going against a destroyer, or a dreadnought, or even a sniper, or tactical cruiser who knew what they were doing, I'd be dead. I was in a stream earlier. I, I was hosting a stream earlier, sorry, where I was playing dreadnought. And if you guys were watching, and if you were uh, if you were watching the current video, were in the stream, you'll have noticed that I was in a sniper, just completely tearing apart these other corvettes on the enemy team. A close quarters combat so it is possible if you know what you're doing but again this is a new release close close beta game new people are going to be playing it so it's to be expected hello there you remember me don't you later alligator don't be a masturbator <laughs> right so, yeah, in this game, oh, sweet Jeebus. Although you can play a tactical cruiser, which is technically a support cruiser, they also have the ability to go offensive. And there's actually one tactical cruiser that's specifically designed for being aggressive and offensive support craft, which is nice. I mean, they exist in uh, fractured space as well, but... Each tactical cruiser in this game can heal in some respect, whereas infected base support craft come in different sizes, varieties, and strengths. So, that has brought these guys into the mindset that if every if so many things can heal, they can't be that powerful, and it works. Alright, here we go. Let's just get back into the combat zone. See if we can't... Oh, hello, big fella. Now, if this guy, my Razor, and the Dreadnought here knows what he's doing, he'll be able to kill me. He's at full health for the most part. Let's go and have a look. Oh, hold on. Uh, do you see target, though? Uh, you know what? Let's go for him. Why the hell not? This is going to cost this guy to possibly leave the game but I don't feel bad about it I want to level up I want to get my monarch class dreadnought so there we go now I really just want to get back to the hub screen hub menu or whatever the hub zone to show you guys how many ships are available how the customization works because the customization is pretty damn impressive in this game it's something this game also does better than Fractured Space. But I believe this game also had a, a big, a larger budget behind it. It's less of an indie game. Whereas that's primarily what Fractured Space is. So it's understandable that Fractured Space is still in early days yet compared to a big studio game. I thought he was going to escape, didn't he? There we go. Last kill of the game. GG. Of course, the game doesn't actually have chat yet, which it did in Alpha, which is strange why the beta wouldn't have it, so I couldn't even type GG. And this is all going live, by the way, so, yeah. This is the result screen. Everyone looks very nice. There's lots of clones in this futuristic universe, apparently. Right, so here we are. Almost level 10. Well, less than halfway to level 10, I suppose. Right, back to the outpost. And this is where it gets interesting. Alright, so... Here is your loadout, of which you can have five. Maybe they'll improve that in the features to where you can have... I don't know, you can pay money, real-life money, to actually extend this. Similar to uh, World of Tanks, you know. I would prefer it if you could just have whatever ship you wanted whenever you unlock it. I mean... If you unlock a certain ship, you're allowed to play it. I don't understand why limiting, to, limit, limiting you to five ships is the case. But I don't think it actually is the case. Hold on. If I want to get the Gora, then I have the Gora. But if I want to change it out for another ship, of which I can't actually get yet because I haven't unlocked them, I could, I don't know, if, let's say I want to get another Invictus Dreadnought, I could just click on it. Are you sure you wish you read this current loadout? And then you can just switch it out, so I don't think that's really a problem. Uh, but no, what I want to show you now is the customization which is damn impressive actually 
All right, so actually, let's go to the Knox. No, I don't want to do that there. God damn it. I want to show people the customization. So here's the Knox. It's a sniper. It's not my favorite sniper in the game, but I can't yet get one of the two snipers I like. Uh, but uh, that's neither here nor there. The appearance menu is what we're looking to see. So, right, you can change the coding. So just plain over on white, which is a, a faction in the game. Now let's say I want it to be whatever color I want it to be. That looks pretty cool. Let's get the Polyphase Cult coding. You'll notice that it's costing one of these FP points, whatever the fuck that means, to actually buy these things. That's only for, I don't know, a day or two after the release of the closed beta, just to get people started, I suppose. I'm not really sure. Promotional thing? I don't know. But, uh, yeah, notice you can change the paint job. And you might be thinking, oh, that's pretty damn cool. That's not all. You can change the pattern of the ship, although it's not available in this one, but you can change to like a woodland camos, digital, stuff like that in the future. As well as, let me show you, the emblem on the ship. And the emblem doesn't actually mean, you know, a little decal. We've got a thing for that. What I mean is, figureheads. So let's get the Hanya, which I already own. Goes with our blue lines there. How about a decal? By the way, there's one for you, Caker, if you're watching. Perfect. See? There's quite a few decals available. Not that many right now, but again, just released. So let's get the Sever Tree Society decal, just because I think it looks pretty cool. Actually, that's free. Hold on. Does it actually work? Let me say. Nah, of course it doesn't. So there we go. But that's actually the most unimpressive part of this. Now the forecastle is the front of the ship. This this part. Now, in Fractured Space you can't change anything. Now that's not a rip in Fractured Space. They're totally different games. People, I've made comparisons, but that's only because they're the two games we actually play as capital ships currently that are going to free to play. So obviously comparisons are going to be made. But look. Currently, there's the forecastle of Silesia. Where did that little uh, docking port go? In case you don't like the look of it, you can get this. But you can only get this currently if you have bought your way into the closed beta. Which I did, but for some reason, mine was bugged out. And I have yet to receive the five ships I was told I would receive. So hopefully that will be fixed soon. But anyway... Uh, yeah, that's pretty much what the ship's supposed to look like. So, looking like this, see this here, and changing it. Hold on, hold on. So, you can add this forecastle to the front of the ship, and it, as you can see, it changes visually a great deal visually. Then, you can change the hull. So, here's the basic hull you start off with, and here's the hull that you will upgrade to. I'm sorry, this here's little white box is getting in the way, I can't move that, but. Watch this here, part of the ship. Notice how it gets more armor plating. I can also change the bridge, and this is uh, one of the bigger changes, usually as for whatever ships I've seen that are customizable so far. From the Alpha and what not. It actually gets a kind of modern carrier type bridge, which is pretty cool. I mean, I think a bridge there looks pretty damn cool. It looks really futuristic and whatnot, but I think this here actually looks pretty cool as well. And of course, last but not least, dad aft. You can change that. Look at how heavily the armor gets. How heavy the armor gets and how heavily the armor gets. Jesus Christ, Connor Grammar. It's pretty cool. And you can do that with other ships. So just uh, let's pick the... Well, I suppose we can't do it with all the ships currently. Let's see if we can do it with the full Gora. So here's the full Gora. The little Corvette I was cleaning up in there. Uh, customizable. Uh, do we actually get a different forecastle? Oh, we do. Right, so here, the forecastle is the front of the ship, okay? 
So that'll be where you can see the little window there. That'll actually be the bridge. Look at that. Completely just encloses the bridge there. If you want to change the hull, it will look like that. It will change, it'll look just bulkier, more heavily armoured, more futuristic actually. And the bridge. Of course, that doesn't really change the bridge at all, it changes the rear of the ship. If you want to see what it ends up looking like, I'll show you in a moment. So it adds these things to it. But I was supposed to also get the ship that that turns into whenever you upgrade it. They're just called hero ships whenever they're fully upgraded, uh, visually. And the ship I was supposed to get and that I just kind of created there, or tried to show you guys there, is the Fulgora Altus variation. Which, that's it there. Looks epic, doesn't it? It really does look fucking cool. And of course, there's the bridge there. You can see the bridge just below it there. It's pretty dark, but uh, there, about there, you can still see it. It's really dark, but of course it looks like a hawk. Or an eagle, whatever you choose. More like a hawk, actually. And that's pretty cool. And I can actually show you the, uh, uh, the Knox artillery cruiser as well, in all its glory. That's it as well. There we go. And probably the coolest ship that you get with this package that I'm really looking to play, I'm really excited about, is the Morningstar Svei class, or Smey, sorry, Smey, class dreadnought. I mean, it just looks like a, a, more, a modern battle cruiser or destroyer, doesn't it? It looks so cool. I mean, look at all those guns and stuff. Ugh, looks so cool. Right, uh, technical cruiser. I know you're all going to be looking to see the rest of these, so. Technical cruiser, aka the healer. I actually think this one is the. I'll have to look. I don't think this one's a dedicated healer. I think this is the one that's actually more aggressive. Let me have a look. Uh, well, we're having a look at these. Let's just. Uh, what have we not looked at yet? We've looked at them all apart from the Huskarl, which is a Gora class destroyer, only heavily modified. The figurehead's really cool. As is the bridge. Dead aft, as one would say whenever they see the rear end of a ship. Because funny. I mean, it really is just an amazing amount of work to have one of these ships. Uh, stagger staggeringly, you'll actually think these are quite big, but they are. <laughs> they actually are. No surprise there, but they're actually quite a bit smaller than the ships in Fractured Space. The biggest ship in this, I do not believe, is even as big as, let's say, the Raider in Fractured Space. Hmm. Interesting. Now, one of my biggest problems with this game currently is that there's no strafe. That really is my biggest problem with it. As well as it's, uh, well, let me, let me show you. Alright. Uh, oh, I'll just click on the big one here. So, here's all the ships that are currently available in the game. Currently there are 15, and there are three types of each. Well, not three types of each. What is that there? Hold on. Let's count the Corvettes. Oh, there's a Krishnik. Haven't seen that in a while. Krishnik is a pretty cool ship. The thing about the ships is that, let's say, uh, that is three destroyers, which there should be. The Gora. Uh, Gora... Yes, the Athos, and where's the other one? Yeah, the Talionis, Talionis, whatever you want to call it. There are three destroyers, so if we click on the Talionis, oh, but we can't actually see its stats. I was hoping that there are a little bit of info down here would change. Uh, yeah, this ship is faster, but it has less armor. Similar to the Invictus, which is the, let me just show you. Where is she? Come on. Seriously? Oh, there it is there. Derp Connor. I'm stupid. That's the Invictus Dreadnought. It's also faster, but doesn't have as much armor as some of the other ships. So, for example, 
here is the Monarch class Dreadnought. So it's very heavily armed, as you can see with all these guns. In fact, you know what, I'll actually show you. It's very heavily armed, very heavily armored, but it's incredibly slow. So you take the good with the bad, as things have to be balanced. And of course, there's the Smee. As, where is she? What are you, Smee? There you are. Uh, and I'm trying to... Uh, So this thing just has heavier armor, I believe. So, uh, yeah. It's a little bit faster. It actually doesn't. Hold on. It's thick armor and a res of... It's kind of a balance between the two, I suppose. Between the Invictus, as you can see here, and the uh, Monarch, which you can see here. So there's three factions. Each faction has... Let me just stop previewing that. A uh, Corvette, a Sniper, a Tactical Support, a Dreadnought, and a Destroyer. Uh, each faction, let's say uh, Oberon, which has these types of ships here. No, fuck's sake. Which has the Oberon class here. They're all these sleek, really smooth looking ships, such as the Fulgora is part of Oberon, I believe, as well. And... Yeah, they're all faster, but less heavily armored. And actually, in the case of this, I think this thing's less heavily armored. Let's say slower, but it's hard to tell because I can't check all the stats of the ship without owning this stupid, the damn freaking ship, which is annoying in itself. Being able to actually check stats and stuff. But I believe this thing's more armored than the other Corvette I played, but it's also slower it's heavily armored but a slower and i don't think the guns the main wap i'm not sure which one it is i don't think the main armament of weapons is as powerful or something you see it's very difficult i'm having a hard time here having a very hard time trying to right let's go to the full gore right there's the full gore see it's speed and it's armor let's see if we can actually check it I you can't i'm just hoping you can so here's the Volcura, which is the other one i played right to go back and then yeah, that's the fastest one, where the Corvette's full gore is more heavily armoured, I was right. Uh, also, these guns here in the front of the... Vilcourt, or whatever you call it, are fixed forward. I mean, they're bigger than the full gore's weapons, but as you can see, they are again fixed and mounted facing forward. I mean, this ship, I've seen the upgraded version of it, the fully customizable version... It looks badass. In fact, it looks more than badass. It looks fucking epic. It really does. Uh, but yeah, during the time whenever I was in the Alpha, this was one of the ships you get by default. A lot of the ships that you currently get by default aren't the ones you got then. Such as the Invictus, the Nox, the Gora. They weren't the ones you got back then. You got the Aeon, I believe, back then. At least I think you did. I'm getting myself confused now. Mm, hold on. Yeah, you got all these four here now, but you didn't get them previously. You got the Aeon back then, but yeah. So that's just a quick look at Dreadnought. I just wanted to get a few things out there, compared a little bit to Fractured Space, because that's what a lot of you are going to be expecting. And it's good. I like it. I enjoy it. It's very, very simple, but again, it's... It, when you play it, or if you do play it, you can just tell it's being designed for consoles, which is a problem. Not because it's going to consoles, but because it feels like it's for consoles, even whenever you're on the PC. There really should be an option to strafe. There really, really should be. It's kind of embarrassing that it's not there. It's it's space. I know whatever two of the three maps that are currently available, is that it? Two, one, two, three. Yeah, I think there's only three maps available. One of them is only in space, whereas two of them are in low altitude. You know, you're fighting above the ground or the factories or wherever the map is set. So that's a problem. I, I just wish you could strafe. That would make the game more enjoyable for me and many others. There are people that are staying away from it because you can't strafe. <laughs> See? 
But uh, I just wish they'd implement it. It doesn't seem like too difficult a thing to do to get right, but I could be wrong. So there you go guys, thank you all very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this. There will be of course more videos on Dreadnought coming out and I of course will enjoy making them. I'll see you next time guys, bye bye.